In this video we will be building our first Kerbal Space Station or Mini Space Station and we're gonna be launching it into orbit only to be shipped off to Duna and become the Duna Orbital Station 1. But first we need to go into our tech tree and we need to unlock some science nodes. We have 471 uh, science to spare so we might unlock one node that will be 300 science and I'm just looking is the logistics worth it? Model storage and all that jazz, logistics modules. I'm thinking, should I press it? Yeah, why not? We need to unlock these and we need to progress because I need the longer, larger cans. And then we have 170 and I need actually to press research for the legs. So yeah, why not? Maybe I'll do it later. Okay, so let's go with the command pod. I'm gonna use the Gemini command pod, which is the two seater. Uh, mainly because I need a pilot and I need a scientist. Then I'm gonna be putting the crew, you know, science collection capsule on top of it. And I'm gonna be putting the drogue chutes. We are, note one thing too important to note, we are not gonna land on Duna. We're gonna go there and we're gonna be in the orbit and we're gonna be collecting some science, doing some science experiments. And when our transfer window pops up, we will be returning back to Kerbin. So. It's not, we're not yet at the lander stage. That's gonna be coming on later. Uh, we have already two craft in the orbit waiting for the Duna transfer window. One being the small probe that we launched like ages ago and the Comnet or, you know, remote uh, relay satellite deployer that we have launched, I think, two episodes ago. So those are the things that we will be launching eventually. So, okay, let's put some reaction wheels and a battery just to make sure that we have enough. Okay, let's place this underneath. I think that's, this is better design. Uh, then I will need some solar panels. Uh, these look cool, but uh, yeah, if I place this up, can I place those then like this? Oh, much better. So after some fiddling, I have still opted for the design using these solar panels because they look beautiful. And then below, I'm actually thinking that I need to construct a vehicle that will be returning the Kerbal back from the Duna. So because this capsule will be returning the Kerbals back. So I need to place this and then I need to be constructing that vehicle that will go back from do not back to Kerbin. Okay, I think that when we fold this, this looks good enough, I would say. All right, so what do we want to place? We want to place some fairing, which will just close this. I don't know, it looks kind of good, but I want to fold these more in. Okay, good, much better. Clamshell deploy, yeah. Okay, now it looks good. So we're, then we're gonna be putting the life support and we need also, I guess, the waste life support. Okay, I might actually place two life support and one waste. That will give us more than enough so that we can actually be for quite a long time in the orbit for going there and transferring back. That's fine. Now, what else do we want to do? We want to make sure that we place an engine that will have enough oomph to get us back. So I'm thinking pool. Thrust to weight 1.2, delta V 1.7 thousand. I think that would be enough. Yeah, 2.3 feels a lot more like safer. And this is just to return to Kerbin from Duna. Good. Now we want to be placing also the communications antenna and I'm trying to find a good one. Maybe I should be placing, oh, that's a too big of a one antenna and that one doesn't work. Okay, let me see what I can do. I'm actually thinking if I place, now it clips, no, 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 no. I think I'm gonna go with the robotics part. So I'm gonna be placing antenna that extends. I think that's better option. So if I place something like this here and then I fold it in. So let me just quickly, yeah, like that. And then I just, let me set my angle. We set it like that. Yeah, when it's open, it's, look, it's good. It's not clipping anywhere. That's fine. So that's the target angle. Let's close it now. And we're gonna say it goes from min minus 90 to minus 12. And we're gonna place it like this. And when it opens, do you clip into reaction wheels? You don't. Good. Okay. Perfect. That's just the way I like it. All right, so let's see what, what else we can do science-wise. We have the mystery goose, right? 
and I'm thinking of placing another one for more experiments. So let's see what we can place. I was thinking actually I could place this antenna as well because then it will be a relay station. Good. And then I am thinking I need a third one because it really wouldn't be good without the third one. So if I place the third one, uh, what could I place? Ooh, magnetometer. So magnetometer I could place on another one of these. Okay. That would make it symmetrical. Good. See? I am finding solutions. Haha. -ha. Yes. Right. Okay, cool. So that's our basically my three main pillars. Short range communication, long range communication and some science. So let's put more sciencey stuff. Thermometer, accelerometer, uh, barometer, uh, other meters, gravioli, RPWS antenna. Shall we put gorset I can cram in here? Yeah, it won't clip still. Nope, it won't. Good. Keep it there. And orbital telescope. Well, that one I'm not sure if we're gonna fit in, Chief. I mean, I really crammed the most of it uh, there, so yeah. Okay. Shall we put like this? Barometer, thermometer. I want to put them low so that I can actually have control over them. Okay, good. And I can easily reset them if needed. Fine, let's go and build the rest of the rocket. Then we place a decoupler. I need a big stage separator, actually. I think that's better. Then I'm going to be placing the docking port so that I can actually attach something to the to the station later on. Then I'm going to be placing a reaction wheels, batteries and all that jazz. So I'm just trying to find a good module that would go there pretty nicely. That one? Maybe? Nope. I need something better. Okay, so what, what what else can I find? Pressurized crew tube? Nope. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Oh, this looks nice actually. And then we put this uh, inflatable blip module. Yeah, I think that could actually work, to be honest. Something like this. How many parts? Well, we have place for lots of kerbals. Actually, I don't need this. Hold on. Uh, where's my uh, ooh, 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 ooh. RCS fuel tank? Can I place some RCS fuel tanks there? Okay, reaction wheels, good. More reaction wheels, yes. Batteries. There we go, batteries, yes. Let's place then these uh, solar panels. I would like to put something on top, so where is my yeah, docking port? Then solar panels, yes. Uh, antennas. Yeah, I'm gonna place only one antenna because those ones are huge and they have metric crap ton of range. Then we put the probe core because, well, eventually we do want that this can be controlled via the probe. So I'm actually just thinking something like that. And then we put the solar panels below. I clip in this guy upwards. Good. That actually gives us a good station, you know, design. All right. So let's place this then at the bottom. Do we want to? I'm not sure. Well, we'll we keep it. Some lights. All right. Good. Yeah, this is better two more lights and then I need a little bit more oomph to actually get it places. There we go. So this will be our first station going forward I would say. And that thing needs to be circularizing in the orbit of Duna so yeah if I place this then it's 1843 so this has to come to Duna. And then we have to find a way how to get there. So it's total delta V 2.8 thousand. All right, good. Then we need to fold everything here and wrap it up nicely. And I have to find another decoupler. And then I have to find a huge tank with engine. Okay. Now that's a long rocket. Okay, let's play some separatrons because we will be ditching the stage. Let's check our staging. Just make sure that everything is correctly placed. 
All right, I think that actually looks quite promising, so to say. I mean, the Delta V is still too little. Yes, uh, some of the actual... Uh, we need some food supplies there as well. Uh, and that's mainly when we when our, you know, launcher leaves. So let's play some huge Ghidorah tanks here. There we go. We're gonna place four because, well, they're huge and we really need to get this thing into orbit. So, right. Okay. We'll make sure that everything is auto-strutted, but we're gonna be placing a lot of Separatrons because this is by far, I think, the biggest thing that I've been getting into the orbit to date. The mega launcher for the for Duna is also quite big, but I think this is bigger. Right. So let me just put in the fuel ducts. I'm gonna use asparagus staging in this case. By the way, guys, in KSP2 that I started to play, I haven't seen yet the ability to do asparagus staging for uh, it could be due to the bug, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, we'll check it out. By the way, I'm still continuing with the KSP1 series because I think that this is more of a complete game. I like the graphics and aesthetics of the KSP2 better. I think the game has tremendous potential, but it still needs to be fleshed out. So, uh, right, okay, we're gonna use the Soyuz launch platform for this guy, because I think it fits nicely with the overall, how you wanna call it, rocket engines and all that jazz. Good. Okay, let me put in the holding clamps. We're gonna place four of them. Perfect. Looks kinda good. Then we're gonna be using the fuel pump and that one's gonna be placing all kinds of stuff inside. Okay, good. I mean, this is our more for my, you know, visual stuff, but I think it actually looks nice. Right. Do we have like a bigger hand somewhere or anything? Okay, this one would be feeding the fuel into the boosters. So might as well actually connect it somewhere. There we go just to make it look busy, if nothing else. <laughs> right. Okay, you're powering the top stage, you guys are powering the bottom stage, and I think that should be just enough. All right, let me sh make sure that everything is correctly staged, that once everything launches, things don't go very Kerbal on me. After all, you know, days since last incident, <laughs> I love the KSP2 trailer, it's really fun. And they're constantly resetting the counter days since last incident <laughs> yeah all right uh we're gonna be doing as i said asparagus staging we're gonna be dumping in groups two by two and now i have to make sure that the separatrons fire at the same time when the decouplers do so just making sure that i've put everything in the correct order and then i think we should probably gonna do the testing and the launch so that's kind of the idea what i had in mind let's see okay you go up you go up up, you go up as well, you go up and there, sorted. Then this fires and then this fairing fires and then and then everybody's happy and we all sing kumbaya. Okay, good. Custom one, we're gonna be placing these hinges. So first I want to unfold all three hinges. Yes. Then Two, I want to extend these, good. Then three, we're gonna be extending the antenna or communitron. Four, we can actually have the big solar panels and there we go. Let's try it out. Decoupling. Starting the engine. And decouple. There we go. Beautiful launch. Our rocket is going, going straight and true. Beautiful. I mean, after going with the KSP2, looking back at KSP1, the clouds actually here look better. I'll give them that. But everything else looks much better in KSP2. Yeah. All right. One thing that I really didn't like in KSP2, how the clouds actually make your craft lines fuzzy for some reason. I don't know if it's a bug or not, but that's something that really needs to be fleshed out. Okay, Dump, dumping the first set of boosters. We're as always going for, let's say, 105 kilometer apoapsis, and then we shall be hopefully going um, 
be correctly aligned for the bird. So in this episode was more of a build episode and I will be launching this and wait for a transfer window when in next one I think I will be sending a lot of my craft on their merry way to Duna. Although I'm actually not sure. I will be sending them all at the same time so they arrive all at the same time but for video purposes I'm thinking that the next episode is going to be one craft going to Duna and arriving and getting there and then the second one, I mean, I'm playing with Kerbal Alarm Clock and I don't think that you guys would appreciate me, you know, doing all three launches in one go and all three arrivals in one go. I, I don't think that it makes a compelling backstory when you're constantly switching between the craft. But that's the way how I play it going there. But uh, I think you guys will find it more interesting if you can follow along the story. Do let me know in the comments below. I mean, obviously for this one we're gonna do as like that, but for future missions I would really like to know what are your preferences. Do you mind if I launch like three vessels and then the whole video is only about them ejecting to, let's say, Duna? And then the second, the second video would be only all of them arriving to Duna. Let me know in the comments. Or would you like, you know, one craft, one story, so to say. That's the, the one that I'm sticking at the moment. So. There we go, soon enough we will be dumping the boosters. Okay, boosters away, and the boosters will still fall down back to Kerbin. <coughs> Alright, there we go. Now we need to fiddle a little bit with the apoapsis and the periapsis, just make sure that our transfer is good enough. Ditching the fairing, opening up, extending, the solar panels. Yeah. <coughs> I really like it. Alright. The target will be Kerman. And there you go. That's the vessel that we are be supposed to actually launch to the orbit of uh, Kerman. And then we're going to be waiting for the maneuver node. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to go just to the apoapsis and I'm just gonna correct it so that the apoapsis and periapsis is circular. Alright, so the maneuver node will take 37 meters per second and it's gonna be happening in 23 minutes so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna accelerate the time until we get there as soon as my craft aligns and we have a total of 5.7 thousand meters per second which should be more than enough to get us to Duna, get us inserted, place the station and then return back to Kerbin safely. All right, our craft is pointing maneuver prograde and the burn will be in 45 seconds. Look at it, look, it, it's really gorgeous. I really like it. All right, and there we go. So, burn, and there we go. 130 by 130 orbit, I think that's great. And I think that all the thing we need to do is we need to create a maneuver node and wait for our transfer, which will be happening in 64 days. Until then, Jebediah and Bob, you can perform some experiments in Kerbin's orbit, have fun, eat snacks, and look at the planet that has brought you and soon enough you'll be saying goodbye to it. All right, guys, if you like the today's video, please hit that like button and I will be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.